Aztec sacrifice, 14th to the 16th century AD. Who were the Aztecs and why was human sacrificing so important and central to their society? The term Aztec is a modern day invention to describe the various tribes who make up the Mexica kingdom. They rose to prominence there during the 9th century and their empire peaked in power and culture from the 14th century until the 16th century when the Spanish conquered the region, devastating and destroying the Aztecs once and for all in an incredibly short space of time. Ritual sacrifice and self-bloodletting was central to the lives of the Aztecs. Ingrained through ritual and tradition into the Aztec psyche, the concept of blood sacrifice was at the very core of their beliefs. They felt they owed a debt to the gods, one the people should continue to pay every day, otherwise the sun would not rise. The Aztecs firmly believed that the sacrifice of the deities at the beginning of time led to the very creation of the universe, while other gods sacrificed themselves in fire in order to breathe life into the sun. The Aztecs believed in many gods and deities, but by far the most important was Huitzilopochtli, the god of sun and war, who demanded blood in order to be appeased. So individual bloodletting became a daily ritual for the Aztecs regardless of the age, gender, or social standing of the victim. Animals were also regularly sacrificed in both private and public. Quail was always a popular choice to use, but they also regularly used dogs, eagles, jaguars, and deer. And certain deities such as the feathered serpent Quetzalcoatl required the sacrifice of butterflies and hummingbirds. Though what really drew the community together was public human sacrifice. They would sacrifice people in public, often prisoners of war, with great pageantry and ritual by the high priest. Such was the demand for human sacrifices. Scholars cannot agree on an exact figure, but believe it was between 1,000 to 25,000 a year. Aztec warriors in battle would often wound an opponent rather than kill him in order to capture him and bring him back for human sacrifice. It is widely believed that many of their wars were motivated by the need to gather more victims and as a way of intimidating neighboring states. They would normally kill these victims by the use of a sacred sacrificial dagger as it was believed their blood would give life to the sun, each drop slowly reviving it in order to give it the strength to rise again each and every day. The freshly cut out heart would then be placed by the priest in a stone vase and was either incinerated and offered to the sun for it to consume or was eaten by the high priest. Often these victims for human sacrifice would impersonate a deity and their sacrifice would mimic the one that the god had once given in the past. They were dressed up and acted like the chosen deity and were treated by others very highly like they were celebrities. Their title was seen as a true honor and after they had been executed their body parts were eaten by the people, often the ruling class, in order to please the gods even further. One particularly gruesome ritual would see prisoners of war dressed up to look like various gods who would then be sacrificed, have their hearts cut out, and their skin flayed from their dead bodies. Their skins would then be worn by the priest as a costume to represent the deity. The festival being held determined how the sacrificial ceremony was carried out, as the Aztecs were a complicated people with an advanced social culture. A common thread throughout these sacrifices was that the heart of the victim would be cut out and a still pulsating organ would be held up high for all to see. At the very center of the Aztec religious world was the Great Temple, which was an impressive pyramid with twin shrines on top, one for Tlaloc, the god of rain, and the other for Huitzilopochtli, the god of war. It was situated in the Aztec's capital city of Tenochtitlan, which is New Mexico City today. Here, countless human sacrifices were carried out by the high priests. Normally, the heart of the victim was ripped out, and then the corpse was beheaded, dismembered, and then the lifeless body was thrown down the steps of the temple to fall 180 feet to the base of the pyramid below. The heads of the sacrifice were then put on skull racks at the base of the temple. This sacrifice was a mythical reenactment of the story of the sun and war god Huitzilopochtli, who took his sister, the moon goddess Coyoshalki, dismembered her body, and then threw her down Cuatopetl, the sacred serpent mountain. In the reenactment, the steps of the temple doubles for the serpent mountain. Most sacrifices at the great temple were prisoners of war or slaves, but also children were sacrificed as their tears were deemed to be linked to Tlaloc, god of rain. 
These traditions went on for hundreds of years, until March 1519 when a Spaniard by the name of Hernan Cortes, heading a small expedition, invaded the Aztec Empire. Within two years, the Aztec Empire had crumbled, conquered by the Spanish, and its population decimated by smallpox. With this and the arrival of Christian missionaries and their powerful backers, many of the Aztec ways and rituals of human sacrifice were confined to the pages of history, once and for all. But occasionally, despite the Spanish invaders trying to eradicate this practice and all monuments to it, some artifacts have still survived to this day, including ceremonial skull towers and skull racks. Subscribe and click the notification bell for more history videos.